lovelies. So at long last, I'm getting the voiceover done for this. So last week, I actually did something I haven't done in a while. I did a scrapbook page. I find that I've been doing a lot of art journaling and then trying to get stuck into my project life and I've barely done any scrapbook layouts. Um, but yeah, I decided to do one for this layout. Now, this was a layout that I did for the March Darkroom Door Facebook challenge. So every month um, there's a challenge that they post up and this, for the month, for the month of March, it was to do an, uh, a resist technique of some kind. And this is something, again, I have not done ever, I think, on a scrapbook layout. I've never clear embossed my background and then um, gone to town with my inks. Actually, you know, I very rarely emboss. Does anyone actually use heat embossing regularly? It's something that I never do. I really should do it more often because I really do love how this turned out. But yeah, it's just not something that I, I tend to reach for, especially not in my scrapbooking. So it was um it was definitely a nice change. So I have the Darkroom Door Grunge Marks stamp set that I have out. Yes, my I'm embossing with clear, but you can see it's a bit black. That's because my embossing ink wasn't the cleanest when I started. Like I said, I don't use it often. But, you know, it's just adding to my layout. It didn't bother me at the time. <laughs> as you can see, it gets clearer as we go on because I'm using the ink, the actual embossing pad. So I'm just going in with the marks and then I'm doing small batches at a time so that the ink isn't drying and then I can emboss over. Then I'm using my clear powder because I don't have any white. But this is a white background, so I was using clear. And then I'm using my heat gun to set that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Distress Oxides to make my background. So I love making mixed media backgrounds. We know this. It's something I do all the time. I use inks. I use paints. I use sprays. You name it, I've used it. But I have never used them like this. I've never used them over an embossing powder as a resist. So it was a really fun, um, a really fun technique to do. Now, this is why I love challenges, because they will push me to do something that I don't often do. And I just love the outcome. So I've gone into my ox Oxides ink pads, and I've pulled out Cracked Pistachio and cit uh, what is it? Twisted Citron. Twisted Citron is one of my most favorite colors. I love how bright it is. And I've mixed it with the Cracked Pistachio, because I've pulled the colors from my photo. Now, this is a photo of... Cooper and my younger sister and we went out on the boat and Cooper decided to sit in the float and she decided to sit with him. Now Cooper has recently just gotten taller than all of us so, and this sister of mine happens to be the shortest of us so he is a good head taller than her and we really enjoy rubbing that in. So there's lots of photos of you know him looking like a very very tall boy next to his aunt but it was just such a cute photo and I really wanted to um to scrap it so as you can see from the float that's sort of where I've pulled my colors from so once I've done my background with my inks I have then gone over and sort of buffed off the embossing powder so once the embossing powder set and my um, background is all set and all dry you can either get um, a paper towel or just a wet wipe and rub over where your embossing powder is and if there's any color that has settled on top of it it'll come straight off and you can see your embossing marks um yeah your embossing resist directly behind it so now i'm just going to build up my layer a bit more i've gone through some of my background stamps and just pulled up a few and i decided to use the same ink pads to add some texture to the background i didn't want to go with black because i didn't want to introduce another color just yet not especially not for my background i really like using um the same ink pads and getting that tone on tone effect with all my texture in the background so it's one of my favorite ways to build up layers in the background so i'm using the same stamp sets and the same ink pads and just alternating where they are so you can see the different varying colors and patterns this is where I decided to bring some black in. So I have another, this is another darkroom door stamp. This is um, a chevron stamp. And I thought I would do this in black and it would sort of be a very big embellishment on my page. And I've used this, decided to use these to um, highlight my photo. 
So I'm just getting some paper, just random paper from my stash to map my photo on because I just really like to map my photos. And then I'm going to put it in the middle of my background and then I'm going to start embellishing. A lot of the time when I've done a big mixed media background, I keep my embellishing very simple. And that is purely because I really enjoy making mixed media backgrounds and I love them to generally be the main focus of my page, which um, because I do it so often, I guess, mixed media is something I, I love. I adore it. It's very rare for me to do a scrapbook page without some form of mixed media on it. And so therefore my embellishing a lot of the time is left very minimal. <laughs> But in this case, um, I really liked the idea of using those big, bold black chevrons to bring in just something a bit bigger and some, you know, some depth into my layout. So I've just stamped them on plain copy paper because honestly, I couldn't be bothered finding some cardstock to stamp them on. Normally, if I want a very... Um, bold crisp black I'll use paint but I had just inked up my ink pad so it was working pretty well for me and so I'm going to put these so I've, I've the chevron stamp is a solid three um, but I cut them up so I could use them singly and then I've put I've added my title with just a small set of white thickers that I got at a recent trip to um, spotlight I like it because there is, because they're so small, there is a lot of all the letters that you need on the sheet. And I always find um, a good white and a good black is a very good staple to have in your stash. So now I'm going to add these chevrons. And what I'm going to do is I'm using some foam adhesive to pop them up to give it some dimension. I haven't mounted my photo on anything with dimension. I've just adhered it straight to my page. So I'm bringing dimension in by popping up these chevrons. So I've been working on um, using up my stash as much as I can, trying to use up some of these older products that I tend to forget I have, going into my wood veneer and my enamel dots a lot more. And so what I decided to do to bring in some more of that black so it wasn't just those chevrons, I've gone through my stash and I've gotten out some of these um, chipboard wooden star, um, chipboard stars in black. And I'm just putting them around my clusters. And then I've gone and gotten... Um, I think it's like a, a, a teal and a, not an enamel dot. It's a, a rhinestone, a Kazakraft rhinestone. And I'm just adding them to my clusters just to bring all my colors together and give me two little nice little clusters around my photo and my title. And that's it for this layout. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's been a long time since I've done a scrapbook page, but I really did enjoy doing it. So I'll be back real soon with a new video. Bye for now.